and welcome back to the Duke of Scorpio Studios here in Geneva. I'm joined today by Dr. Michael Hopkins to discuss the tennis ball theory of investing. So Michael, welcome back to the studios. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So Michael, you're normally very active in CSRs. So tell me, why have you turned your attention to investing? Um, <clears throat> Actually, I've been involved in, in investing all my life, and probably in investing in education, human capital, and so on. Um, but I also have been collecting wine most of my life. Um, I think uh, what happened was that it was the, the day that the Dow Jones really dropped drastically. And then I found out some of my friends and relations and were worrying about what to do with their investments and the rest of it. So I said, have you never heard of the tennis ball theory of investing? And they said, no, what's that? I said, well, it's actually it's quite complicated. Basically, what goes up, goes down. And what goes down, goes up. Is that it? Yes. Now, how do you apply that to investing? Well, because there are peaks and troughs in investing. And the biggest thing that invest investors and traders are not so good at is the turning point. So when the ball goes up, like the Dow Jones gets up to 18,000, 20,000. I mean, I must say I got out of it when it was 12,000, but anyway. Um, when it goes up, you know at some point it's going to go down. Huh? Um, for instance, when the, the Swiss uh, devalued against the, uh, revalued against the, the US dollar, um, uh, was it six months ago or so? Um, what happened was the, 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 the dollar went down to 0.88, I think, of a Swiss franc. You knew it couldn't get any lower than it was going to bounce back up again. So that, in a way, was a turning point. And in many ways, the turning points are obvious. The other one was the price of oil, uh, which happened about the same time. And still, it's, it's pretty low. Um, I looked this morning, it's about $45. Uh, but it went as low as $38 during, during August. But it had been as high as $147. Now, it was obvious when it got to $147, it couldn't stay there. It had to fall, the tennis ball. It goes up and it comes down. The question is you don't know exactly when. So can your theory predict future investments? Good question. You can't predict the future. Uh, there's, there, there's no way. So everything we do is based on, on past trends. And unfortunately, most of the analysts who come, perhaps on your program and so on, are looking at straight line. So they say, yeah, that's going to continue into the future. Unfortunately, trends never do continue into a future. There is a turning point. Now, the issue is, who's good? Who's good uh, about looking at the future? Well, in a, in a sense, nobody is. Because if you have a thousand traders, you're going to get, you're going to find 10 who are going to be perfectly right, right? So over maybe a year or so, they make a lot of money for themselves and their client, but 990 won't do so well. Now, the next few years after that, will it be the same traders or will it be a different set of traders? Well, probability theory would tell us it would be a different set of traders. So it's incredibly difficult about forecasting the future. And as Warren Buffett always says, be consistent with, with, what, you, with what you do and think over the long term. In fact, uh, one of the finest investors was actually John Maynard Keynes, a British economist, quite famous, who set up the World Bank and the rest of it in the 30s. He would spend the mornings in bed talking to a stockbroker. And his theory was, a bit, a bit like mine, or let me say mine's a bit like his, which is go with the crowd and try and get there before them. And the same with the tennis ball theory. If it's going up, ah, this is the time it's going to go up. And when it gets to the top, it's going to come down again. The problem is you don't know exactly when. So the, the, the trick is don't be too greedy. Let somebody else make some profits as it goes up. And then when it goes down, get in it and it, get in again. I mean, oil, for example, is an example. I mean, probably a good time to buy, maybe wait a bit. Um, wine investment, I don't know. Actually, um, my wine's being sold in Christie's in London uh, exactly in a week's time. So, Michael, you said that anyone that invests that makes profit from your investment advice should put their money back into social responsibility projects. So what kind of projects would you suggest? Well, thank you for asking that one. Um, I, let me go back a little bit, is that uh, I always look at the Salvation Army, right? 
and they come every year, they do great work, and wonderful people helping old people and all sorts of things that they do. Uh, so I give them money. But the following year, they're back again, especially at Christmas. And I say, hang on, I gave you money last year. You're, you're asking again, where's the sustainability in your investment? So what I'm looking for are sustainable investments. investments. So when you put in the initial investment, that, that project continues into the future. It's, you can't always find projects like that. And corporations especially are very good when there's a tsunami or something or a major, or a major disaster. Well, in, in that time, you can't really think about sustainability. You've got to go out and help people. Uh, but generally, a lot of projects, which are charitable projects, um, stop as soon as a donor starts putting in the money. So what I would suggest is that these projects should be sustainable over time. And in fact, that's what I wrote about in, uh, in my books. Uh, the one on the right will be coming out uh, next month, um, and the one on the left. But the one on the right is 650 pages. But uh, it's, it, the idea is that it's going to be a, a source book, a reference book for business schools and people, corporations, public sector, and so on. But in there, I'll give you a lot of examples of the sorts of projects uh, to invest in, which are socially responsible. And in fact, my, my, my last point is that if by using the tennis ball theory of investing, you don't have to pay me. I'm not selling anything. But if you make any money, and I, I reckon about 10% of you will, maybe more, please use some of those profits to invest in socially responsible projects. I'd be very, very pleased. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expertise with us. Pleasure. And thank you for watching. For all the latest Jugoscopy updates and interviews, do keep clicking back. Goodbye for now.